I'm Shane and I am about to do a lockdown um, video of various things at my friend's insistence because we are all bored to death and so I will use my boredom to have a fun sort of video for my friend's amusement. So I'm going to do um, a quiche today um, and because it's lockdown we are going to use what we have available to us. So I'm going to do my courgette, zucchini, baby marrow, whatever you want to call it, quiche. But because I don't have those things, I'm going to do a broccoli and blue cheese quiche. So this is what lockdown cheese looks like. Uh, it's been in the fridge, obviously, since I locked down. And so because we don't waste anything, we're not going to throw this away. We simply cut off all of this lovely uh, green stuff. And we will use this and we have um, just some ordinary blue cheese, nothing major and cream and eggs and flour and so on. I don't have vegetable shortening in my fridge, so I'm adapting it and I'm going to use a little bit of coconut oil, which isn't optimal because it kind of does not very nice things to pastry. However, I'm, I'm lowering that and I'm going to use a little bit more butter and hope that it works out. So. The beauty of this pastry is that you chuck it into the um, food processor and it is amazing. So that's what we're going to do now. I'll just chuck this in. I've got my recipe which is off my computer which I've put all my recipes on and I have photographed it. Let me just put my eyes on. Right, so we've got a one and a half cups of flour, a teaspoon of salt, um, 125 grams of veg shortening and because we just moved in before lockdown I don't have half my kitchen stuff. So that is about half a cup um, of vegetable shortening margarine. I don't use that stuff. Um, three dessert spoons of butter and three dessert spoons of water, iced water. So into the food processor it goes. This is my mountain of, I've used two tablespoons of coconut oil. And then I've used one, one tablespoon of butter to make up the three tablespoons. And then I uh, got three tablespoons of butter. And it's, there's a teaspoon of salt in here as well. So the iced water goes in last. First we pulse this. To get a sort of breadcrumb effect and then it's about three dessert spoons of iced water until the, the, the pastry just comes together depending on your flour it can be more it's very rarely less So let's just bring it all together. Needs more. Not that these are actually dessert spoons, but you know. That's the noise you want to hear. It means it's engaging and it's going to start making your crumbs into dough. And I might still need a bit more. So you can see it's kind of coming together, which means it's going to be nice and short, which is what you want. So I'm going to add a smidge more water. should be good so you can see it comes together nicely now so now we're going to let it rest for 30 minutes um, it's really something that needs to be done otherwise pastry shrinks and it just behaves really badly and it is a pain in the ass actually so it's better to be nice and cold and it comes together and it doesn't shrink and then you've got a better pastry. So this is going to go into a plastic thing. Okay, so this little nifty thing here, which most people don't realize is for a reason. 
it enables you to pull it out without the whole stupid thing coming out. Okay. So when it's nice and crumbly like this, you know that it's going to be quite nice and short. Uh, and that means that you're going to have a beautiful crumbly uh, pastry, which is really good for quiche. So we're just going to put this in the fridge now. Let it sit and relax. Let the glutens relax. And then we'll come back to you when this is ready. Okay, so while this is in the fridge, this is the recipe, which I will you know, give to anybody who's interested. Um, we're going to prep the rest of the stuff. So we need 150 grams of cheese, two small courgettes, which I'm just going to use the leftover broccoli that I have in my fridge, three eggs, one and a half cups of cream, uh, half a teaspoon of salt, nutmeg, brown, uh, black pepper, and two tablespoons of butter. So we're going to put the oven on to 200 uh, to heat. There we go. And then we're going to do the rest of it. Right. So let's look at this monkey cheese. Which is not part of the blue cheese. Okay. But it's perfectly fine. So all of you people, precious people who like to throw this stuff away, don't. Just cut it off. Yeah. Okay, that side perfectly fine. That side really shitty. Off. Another tip for this hasn't even been opened, but when you have opened your cheese and you find that you've barely used it and it's started getting all this fungus on it, this bacteria, it's usually because someone has put their filthy fingers on it. Um, and then the bacteria that is normally on your hands gets transferred onto the cheese. So, I mean, I'm doing this now because I have to cut all of this stuff off. But usually what I do when I open up cheese, I do this. I, I keep it in the plastic and then I just take off what I need. So that my own finger bacteria doesn't get on it. You know, which is really gross. Okay, so about 150 grams of cheese. Is probably about that much. So I'm just going to do that. Bear in mind that the cheese that's being used, this is the total weight of the cheese, 150 grams. I'm adding blue cheese to it, which will just sit nicely on the top and just give it a little bit of je ne sais quoi. Um, let's grate this cheese. Because this is quite an interesting process in this one. This one, um, you put the cheese on the bottom of the pastry once you've baked it blind. So it sort of has a, a layer um, and stops the egg custard from making the pastry soggy, I guess. But it works quite well. And you should really use a nice strong cheddar, which of course I don't have. Um, I'm using what I've got. So this is just a normal white cheddar. I'm going to chuck that in there. And then we're going to just break up the florets. And quickly parboil them. Just blanch them. Right, so we're going to bring that to the boil. And then that will be ready. Water boils so much faster when you have a lid, girls and boys. Okay, let's see what else we need. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to season the water. So this is my cooking salt. Just so that the broccoli has a little bit of flavor. Besides its own natural flavor. Um, now we're going to do the custard. So I need one and a half cups of cream. So this is one cup. 
and another half here. That's one half. Okay. And then we've got three eggs. And then we're just going to mix this up. And then I'm going to season the custard. Pepper. And some salt. It's my salt pig. And then some nutmeg, which I do have somewhere, which is really tragic because this is all I've got left. Can you believe it? Okay, so the water's boiling. Let's put in the broccoli. I'm not going to refresh this in ice water like you should when you blanch because it's just going to be cooked again. So I'm just going to leave that for a couple of minutes. And then it will be fine. Right, so I need my little... This is all that's left of my microplane, which is also very tragic, but I still use it. So I'm just grating some nutmeg in here. Don't go wild with it because it has got quite a strong flavor. Give it a mix, and now this can just sit and wait for the pastry and everything else to come together. Okay, so this has been cooking long enough, I reckon. Just gonna drain this. And I can sit and wait for us. And then I'm just going to quickly do this because, you know, seriously, I don't know how these beautiful TV chefs do it, but for me, uh, long red hair is really not cool in your food and it happens to me all the time where people are flossing their teeth with my hair which is gross. Okay, so now we are going, I'm a bit worried about the quantity of pastry that I have made for this pan which is the only quiche pan that I have at the moment because all the other stuff is in storage. So I'm going to try this one, if not then I'll quickly make some more and we'll just carry on as normal. So, I'm going to grab the pastry. Okay. Okay, so I've cheated a bit and put this in the freezer, so it's going to be interesting. Let me move this. It's a tiny bit that I left behind. Put my rice in. And a bit of flour, which I don't want too much of. We're just going to bash this out because it's quite hard. That's not going to be enough, I don't think. So I might have to, to make this same recipe again so that it can go into this because it's definitely not going to fit there even if I make it quite thin. And the nice thing about quiche pastry and this sort of pastry is that you, if you tear it, it doesn't matter. You know, you can just squidge it together. And it's cool. But you obviously don't want huge holes in it because otherwise all your custard's going to go through. So, um, See things like that, you just do that. It's perfect. It's really not an issue. So let's see if we can get a little bit more mileage out of this before so that I know what I'm, how much I have to prepare. Okay, so let's have a look.
We might get away with it. Who knows? So it's just short. So this is perfect for a normal round quiche tin. Oh, this is such a nuisance that I have to make more. Let's see if I can't get away with it. Nope, I'm going to have to make some more. Okay, so I shall see you in five minutes once this has been done. I'm going to put this in the fridge in the meantime to relax while I make a quick batch of more pastry. See you in five. So, if you don't have a food processor, you just do it by hand. So you would put in your flour, you would put in your vegetable shortening and your butter and you cut it up with a knife and you add the water and you do it slowly that way it's very easy but the food process just makes one's life so much easier um, this is a lot of cheating going on here because I haven't let this sit in the fridge because otherwise it's not helping my boredom any you know the whole point of this is to alleviate boredom but it'll still work out but it will be interesting to see if this side of the quiche is worse than the other side. Okay, so, so nice about this pastry. This is, an, uh, uh, I did a half recipe extra pastry for this, for this size tin. And it doesn't look that pretty, but it'll be fine. I've done it a bit higher because I have cheated, so there is a possibility that it is gonna shrink. We're gonna bake this blind which basically means that you're going to pre-cook the pastry so that you don't end up with, as Mary Berry would say, a soggy bottom. So, wax proof, not wax proof paper, baking paper goes in there. And I do have baking beads which are in storage. So I'm just going to use my black beans, which will add weight to it. And then it's going to go in at 200 degrees for 10 minutes. Okay, and then we're going to remove the baking paper. Actually, what I'm going to do first, which is a lot easier, is this. Because this is a loose bottom pan, so it does make it easier. Right, so for 10 minutes. Take it out of the oven at 200. Now we are going to remove the paper with the beans in it. They are bitching hot, don't touch them. Put this there from oh, just now. Then I need a fork. And then you just prick the bottom because this is going to go back into the oven for another five minutes without paper. Back in. Set the timer for five minutes. Okay, five minutes and got enough technology. So when this is cold, then I'll put my beans away. And now we wait again until the quiche pastry is ready. Oh, first, most importantly for Nikki. Why am I playing with coffee when it's lockdown and it's one o'clock? I mean, for God's sake, I can have some wine. No one's going to judge me. Thank you to our friends, Steve and Emily, for this as well. Very gratefully received. Cheers. So when you're waiting patiently for your pastry to be cooked, you sample the blue cheese because you're drinking wine. It needs to happen, you know what I mean? Delicious. 
So this should be almost done. Eight, seven seconds. So we can take this out, have a look at it. Grand. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our, our cheese that we grated, put it on the bottom, which acts as a sort of shield. And it's quite nice to do this. I've discovered any little holes that may open up. You've got this great cheese that kind of blocks it up. So if you see any little holes developing, you can cover it with cheese. Okay, that's all I'm going to do with that. Then I'm going to take the broccoli. You know, you can do anything you want. You can add chicken and broccoli is a, a great combination. Mushrooms and caramelized onions. Um, so many things you can do. Any vegetables you've got left over, especially um, if you're sitting with bags and bags of frozen vegetables which you panic bought you know um, you can do anything with it so now we've got the custard which I'm just going to give a little stir again it's just going to go in and I, I like seasoned food so I'm gonna add a few more things so I'm addicted to crushed chilies because they just add so much of everything you know make life so much nicer um, surprisingly I haven't got garlic in here because I'm a real garlic freak as well and I'm just gonna add a twist more pepper and not too much salt because the blue cheese is quite salty then we're going to get the blue cheese and we're just going to dot some around the joint so that it's nice melty blobs of blueness. And broccoli and blue cheese is also a marriage made in heaven. Oh, look at this. Yummo. Okay. A little bit more because this isn't quite enough custard and then I'm just gonna bang a little bit more cheese on top because I mean what is quiche without cheese let's be honest so you can't really have too little of it and I don't want to waste anything so there you go so now the oven put the oven down to 175 which I should have done as soon as I took it out, but anyway, so I'll leave it open for a second. And then this goes in for half an hour. Or until the custard is just set. Okay, so, set the timer for 30 minutes. Okay, your timer is set for 30 minutes. Marvelous, now we will wait and see what happens. Okay, I'm checking it now because I've had less custard in here. So it's not quite 30 minutes, but I don't want it to be overly set. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Uh, let me just do this timer will go off. So we're gonna leave it here to cool for a little bit. You can see that it's not quite up to the edges. So. That is clearly indicative that there's not enough custard. Um, I should actually have increased the custard, but I, I just couldn't be asked at that, that stage. So we will now wait until it's a little bit cooler. Mm, pastry is divine. And then as soon as it's cooled a little bit, I will take it out of here without getting third degree burns. And then I'll cut a wedge for you. And then that's our lunch slash dinner sorted. So I'll see you in five. Good pastry. Mmm, yummy. Get cool. So here we have the finished product. I have taken it out of the 
tin and I'm going to cut it to show you now. It is delicate, it is lovely and light. So you can have this, and I've, it's still quite hot, so obviously you let it cool a little bit. And then just serve it with some salad. I'm rushing things because it's still hot. I'm just going to drag it across before it breaks so that you can see the inside texture which is lovely and creamy and not a bloody solid block of something and that's really good I hope you guys enjoy it and because this is my first video and I'm a little bit self-conscious and a bit awkward about it I've decided I'm going to give it another shot tomorrow and I'm going to do a tart tartan for you see you then